Welcome or welcome back to Bite Size Book Reviews. This is V and today I'm going to be talking about The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. So this is the first book of a series. Um, the story follows a librarian called Irene who works for an organization called The Invisible Library. So basically this library exists between parallel and alternate universes. So it's a place that connects all of these different places. And a lot of these librarians travel across these different realities to collect different rare books and bring them back to the library. At the beginning of the story, Irene is sent with a new student called Kai to a version of Victorian London that has things like vampires and werewolves to collect an old copy of Grimm's fairy tales. But after they get there, they discover that the book has already been stolen and also that this mission has a lot more going on that, than they were told and also promises to be a lot more dangerous than they initially thought. Though they already had some clues about that when they uh, started researching the mission since they found out that the reality they're going to is under what they call like quarantine for having really high levels of chaos infestation. So basically in this world you've got um, two basic types of forces I guess you could say. So you've got the chaos side which is uh, represented by their version of Fae and also the order side which is actually represented by dragons. So you know these forces often clash in different universes and you know, ideally you want it to be more in balance and preferably towards the order side. Like when you have too much tip towards chaos you start to get a lot of bending and like the natural laws of the universe and like a lot of like the stranger creatures and more like bizarre phenomenon start to infect the world and you know that can cause a lot of different problems. Uh, I think this story does a really good job of making me want to learn more. Like there's a lot of mysteries going on like you know for instance their dragons it sounds like actually often take part in restoring order in worlds that have a lot of chaos. So you have like the you know wondering how they fit into the story since they really only just start to touch on dragons. You have the library which itself is a mysterious organization like you know that at least from what the main character says their mission is to collect books and they claim that they want to preserve I guess books from different places but they also do some illegal things to obtain the books that they get and you know like they're isn't very a clear justification for why they feel like they can do this. So you don't really know what what place the library actually holds in the universe, like how it began, like why it exists, like and all of these I think are mysteries that it hints at uh, possibly answering in future books because it you know it's uh, basically highlighted in this story and it's kind of a point of contention. Though the library does appear to be more closely tied to um, the side of order as opposed to chaos since it, um, being like for instance it's something that is touched by chaos can't actually enter the library. So that's definitely something that I find very interesting about it. Something that I guess I'm a little more unsure about so I'm someone who tends to gravitate towards stories with characters that I like so I can read books where the plot is interesting even if I don't like the characters but those tend not to be the books that would end up on like my favorites list and I think the fact that there's so many secrets going on like you can tell that there must be something going on with the main character's history and there must be something going on with, with like the new student she has and something going on with the higher politics of the library that she doesn't understand and like all of these secret plots and stuff behind the scenes it makes it so that I don't know which characters I can trust and I think when I say that it means kind of like which characters I'm able to like. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm the kind of person who might get a little mad if I liked a character and then they suddenly turn out to be some evil backstabbing bad guy or something. So it's safer generally for me to reserve my um, sentiments about characters until I know for sure. But the fact that I'm not able to decide who I can like safely makes it a little bit harder 
I guess, to really get into. I mean, the only thing you know that the main character is probably safe, but other than that, like, you're really unsure about where everyone stands in the grand scheme of things. Overall, I do think it was a really fun kind of world. Like, it gives off the feeling of having a lot of possibilities, like, imagining all these alternate universes, and they talk about having, like, different levels of magic and technology in different universes, and also touches on this idea of whether it's right or okay to possibly, for instance, try to change a universe with knowledge and information from another. And like, so a lot of these concepts, I think, are really kind of fun to think about and creates a lot of room for possibility that makes me look forward to what might happen in future books.